What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Hogline Podcast. You are listening to episode 36 of the Hogline Podcast. Uh, it's just me and Jack today. Hey. Jack is uh, he's bringing the energy. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. this is episode 36. Uh, we got, I always say this every, every single episode, but we do have a lot to talk about today. I feel like this could be a, one of the longer ones, but what do I know? It could end up being short. Who knows? Uh, we're going to be talking about the NBA. We're going to be recapping the Golden State Warriors and Houston Rockets game six that wrapped up the series last night. And also we'll be previewing game sevens. The two game sevens are tomorrow. Yep. So by the time this is out, uh, they'll probably both be done. And what we're saying will be outdated, but it'll still be, uh, you know, interesting to hear what we had to say, our thoughts and whatnot. Um, yeah, then we'll be talking about the rest of the playoffs kind of in general briefly. Um, I'm going to say what I think is going to happen. And after that, we'll be talking <clears> about the PGA Championship. That is this week on Thursday. Um, getting into that briefly. And then to close out the show, uh, I'm going to ask Jack some questions. He doesn't really – I mean, he does know what it's about kind of, but not really in a way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get started. Uh, the – First thing we'll get into is the Rockets and the Warriors. Last night, game six in Houston, the Warriors defeated the Rockets 118 to 113. And this was a great game. It really was. It was. I didn't get to watch the first half, but um, great second half and a great game. I, can't, I don't know exactly, but <clears throat> I can't remember a time where one team led by more than seven or eight. It was def- there was never a, that I saw. there was never a double digit lead. I don't think. Um, pretty much every single time, it was just neck and neck the whole way through. Um, Steph was scoreless in the first half, as probably everyone knows. Uh, he didn't. He had zero points, which is very odd. And he finished with thirty three in the game. He had <laughs> twenty three in the fourth quarter. A lot of big shots down the stretch. So he played awesome. There's a stat. Um... It was on. They ESPN showed it during game um, last night. Steph hasn't missed a free throw, a postseason free throw in the fourth quarter or overtime since 2014 or something, or 2015, I think. 2015 finals, I think, was the last time. Just like during the stretch where he got fouled so many times at the end. I think in this one he went eight for eight. Yeah. In this past the one yesterday. And that's why he had 23 in the fourth because he hit the line so much. But yeah. Yeah, and he had back, uh, a step back three with like a minute and 30 seconds left. Put him up by five, I think. I screamed it's over. It wasn't over. I mean, they, they were still... Yeah, I don't know why you said that. I just wanted it to be over. I'm like, it's over. Well, of course they wanted to be over, yeah. But If you couldn't tell, we were both rooting for the Warriors. Of course. Because Jack, obviously, with his disdain for James Harden, and I'm kind of hopping on that, too. I, I, uh, he sucks. Yeah, <laughs> he's kind of made an enemy out of himself in a way. I feel like I feel like it's not just us though. Yeah, I mean, and his legacy kind of took a hit. Not legacy, I guess. Legacy is the right. I don't know if that's the right word. Just like the the what's the word? Just the saying behind James Harden just reigned true again that he can't put up playing the postseason. Which I know you're, he put up thirty five, but I mean he just can't win in the postseason. What I mean. Yeah. Over his career, he hasn't... What is the farthest he's been? He's been to the finals on the Thunder. On the Rockets. They went to the Western Conference Finals last year, but, I mean, their historic choke. I, yeah, he just proved that... I don't know. I mean, I hate him, but, like, he put up 35, and I can't say that he can't play in the postseason, but I don't know. He couldn't beat the, this Warriors. This... Well, I mean, we'll see. If, if they get to spend, but if they don't... Then he might have some more problems for the rest of his career in the postseason, but um, I don't know. What? The last two games without Durant, still couldn't beat them. Yeah. They're full strength. Yeah, no. But maybe it's just the Warriors, who knows? Yeah, um, I think I maybe not it may not just be James Harden, just the Rocket system in general. Like they don't play that many guys. They throw yeah. what, there's seven or eight out there for most of the seven, I think. I think it's and then there's a lot of ways you could distribute the the blame on the Rockets, but I feel like more blame has to go on D'Antoni. He's just historically has never 
made it yeah. this far in the playoffs. And he's a good coach. So yeah, just I guess he's not a postseason coach. I wrote down, I was looking at the stats for the Rockets in this series just a, not that long ago. Um, why? I noticed that P.J. Tucker's playing played a lot throughout, right. throughout this series. He averaged 41 minutes per game. Up from the season, he averaged 34 minutes per game for the whole season. Uh, I mean, I don't... He's good. I don't I don't know how good he is. He's an undersized forward, but he's, like, good. He plays good, hard defense. His field goal, opponent's field goal percentage, I wrote down, is 48% for this series. I don't know. He's always hustling out there. It's what I see. Not much of an offensive threat. The season, he averaged seven points a game, five rebounds a game, one assist a game on 39% shooting. Like, statistically, I don't know. He didn't jump out at me at all, just looking at it now. I don't understand why he... he was out there so much. I mean, it's, I guess it's because they really don't have size outside of Clint Capella. Yeah, who would be their next tallest player, do you think? I guess that's why he's playing so much, and that could be part of their problem. He's only 6'5", Peter right. Tucker. I, yeah, and he's their small, a, a small forward. Plays, they run three guards the, out there. He plays the four sometimes. Yeah, he's got, he's got to play the four. They're, they're, I think Iman Shumper is taller than this. but Yeah, but he I don't know how good he is, but... They run three guards. But, yeah, he's more of a three. They run three guards, P.J. Tucker and Clint Capella out there because it's Paul Harden and, or- and Gordon, and they run Tucker. That's the, their lineup. The majority. That's I think that's their starting five. That's not the, the majority of the game, their lineup. They I, Maybe it's just that they, you got to chalk it up to not their lack of size. That could be an issue. Maybe. I mean, when they, and the Warriors got guys like Draymond and Iguodala that they're not big themselves. Clay but, Thompson's a big guard. Right. And Durant's, I mean, with Durant, Durant's a big... I'm just trying to say without Durant, but also with Durant. Like, I don't know. They're not... I wouldn't call them a big team. Like, the Sixers are a big team. But like, the Warriors aren't necessarily a big team. Just, yeah, maybe the the Rockets' lack of size at the forward position is really... Could be a part of their problem. Maybe. Clay had 27 in this contest. Well. And Chris Paul played really well. He had 27 points and 11 boards. Shot over 50%. Harden, you said mentioned before, had thirty five, so he did what he normally does. Um, just an average game for him, but yeah, below average, thirty six. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it was just too much. <laughs> I also have written down Chris Paul in his post game press conference. I think he what he said kind of made a lot of sense. He said that he I don't know who he told this to, but he said we just got to make their other guys make plays. Like not you got to make the other guys beat us. Like guys like. Like Igadala and stuff like that. Jared and Cook. And... Jared Cook. He's a tight end for the Saints. Quinn, Quinn Cook. Yeah, Quinn Cook. <laughs> um, but, and he said, but they just made their shots. Like, Igadala yeah. made five threes in the game. I didn't even notice. Yeah, he had 17 points. He had five threes. Uh, and Looney had 14. So the role players did step up. And that's. Yeah. If the role players are making shots in the Warriors, then you're just not going to beat them. Yeah. And it's so. Uh, uh, this is the, like, a lot of the times, like, in these postseason matchups, like, it's so evenly matched between both sides, and, like, it sounds so dumb, but I, a lot of the time I just think, like, whoever's shots are falling is going to win. Because, like... And it, it could come down to, and it does come down to in a lot of instances, like, whose who shots are falling in the last two minutes of the game. Yeah. Like, I'm... We're going to talk about the Sixers Raptors coming up, but the first six games, the high the team with the higher field goal percentage won the like won each contest, and I. Well, yeah, that I, that makes sense. I know it makes sense, but I don't. I I I was I didn't have time. I want to look up how often does that not happen, where a team's lower a team with a lower field goal percentage wins a game, but yeah, I don't know. Just like with streaky shooting, I, yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yeah, so the Warriors advance to the Western Conference Finals, and they'll be taking on the winner of Sunday's matchup, uh, the Portland Trailblazers versus the Denver Nuggets, which we'll get into right now. Uh, This is the first of the games, I believe, tomorrow. It's at 3.30. Denver is home, uh, as they were the higher seed. They have home court advantage. Um, Yeah, Damian Lillard's killing it, as usual. He's averaging nearly 30 points a game. Shooting forty five percent, almost forty percent from three in the playoffs. Um, Jokic is doing his thing, almost averaging a triple double. And wow, I, I this these 
I think these teams are also very, very evenly matched. Yeah. Um, I wrote down how a lot of the Trailblazers, um, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of their success is attributed to two guys. Um, I'm trying to say that the Nuggets, I feel like the, looking at statistically throughout this series and the whole year, really, like their production on offense has been distributed like not evenly but a far even more even spread than the trailblazers like um rodney hood outside of lillard and mccollum rodney hood is really the only one that stepped up consistently throughout the series he's averaged 16.1 points per game that's up from his season total of i think it was like 10 or 11 but Cantor still provides some good offense though <laughs> Yeah, I, did, I don't know how many he's averaged in a game. But uh, a lot from their guards, the Blazers get their offense from. And another guy I wanted to point out was Zach Collins. Uh, last two games, he's averaged 14. Well, he, he got 14 each game on 50% from the field. Which is good for him because uh, Collins is um, mainly a defensive. Yeah. That, that's his, you know, prowess. So if he can get Seven you four... Foot. If he can get you 14, then that then that's just really nice. Yeah, so it's going to take guys like him to step up. Um, I don't know. Who knows? Like, Lillard can go off for 50. But uh, but the Nuggets side for the series, Jamal Murray has averaged 24.7 points per game. Paul Millsap, 18.7 points per game. Nine rebounds per game. And then, as I said, it's like a <clears throat> pretty uh, – they had a lot of their role players step up throughout the series, like Will Barton – uh, Tory Craig, Gary Harris, and Malik Beasley. Um, yeah. So, what do you? I I think the X factor is Jamal Murray. I think if he has a good game, the Nuggets will win. Yeah, and a lot of times throughout the year, he they kind of live and die by him. Yeah. What I thought was interesting, I have written down, that Jamal Murray at home has averaged in this series, just this series, not in the playoffs. At home, he's averaged eighteen point seven points per game, and on the road, he's averaged thirty point seven. It's weird. Yeah, and they're at home. They're at home. I don't. That's it's kind of odd, but yeah, that makes sense. That you said he averaged twenty four point seven. It's right in the middle. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I, I that's kind of odd how this series he's played a lot better on the road. That's a twelve point swing, uh, as opposed to home court. The Nuggets are five and a half points favorites. Um. I feel like, in the NBA, if you're home, you're favorited. Most of the time, unless it's like a dr- drastic in a series like this, yeah, yeah, in a in a in the, series in like all this. these series, yeah. Probably. So, um, who do you think is going to win and why? I I think the Nuggets are going to win. And I think it's going to be because of Jamal Murray. I I think the Nuggets are going to win because of what I said. How it's been a pretty um, even distribution of scoring throughout the series, and like in a game seven, pressure's on. They're not going to. They don't rely on one guy having to hit shots, and like. If you rely on one guy having to hit shots, then like nerves can get to you. It's a game seven. If you're if you're not hitting shots, you're done. But I feel like a lot a lot of these Nuggets players can step up. I mean, Jokic is gonna get what he's gonna get. Jamal Murray will probably get what he's gonna get. Paul Millsap as well. And then they have several other guys, like ones I just mentioned, like five other guys that can step up and do some scoring for him. Yeah, and it sounds like you just don't necessarily trust the role players for Portland as much. Yeah, not as really. much as like, Denver. Outside of their like they got obviously McCollum and Lillard, um, and then Hood has stepped up in this series. I mean Zach Collins, he's at he had fourteen a piece of the last two games, but then before that he went four eight ten four on like decent field goal percentage. So yeah, I don't know. I I, I trust the Nuggets depth more. Yeah, uh, I know the Nuggets were kind of like a popular preseason team to like do some damage, but like I never really thought they'd be in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, especially imagine next year if Michael Porter Jr. T- turns into something that he's supposed to like. I love Michael Porter Jr. and like he w- he was picked tenth or no, I think he was like thirteenth, lower, 14th. yeah, thirteenth, yeah. fourteenth, um, fourteenth. Um, but he's sat out this year because of injury, and if he comes back and he's anything what he's supposed to be, I mean he without injury in college, he would have been the first overall pick in 2018. Yeah, there was a reason why he was the number one recruit coming out of high school. Right, so, I mean, I mean, he he's going to even, I don't know, they, this team... They, bright, this bright could be, they're all young, too, bright future. Right, so this could be the start of a dynasty. Um, 
in Denver if the I mean the Warriors this bad. Except, I mean they're all young except Paul Millsap. He's not young, right? No, he's not. But, <laughs> but he's a nice, he can be nice veteran piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so future's looking bright in Denver. He can we- be replaced by Michael Moore Jr. Sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. the future's looking bright in Denver whether they win or lose this game. But hey, they'll be taking on the Warriors if they win tomorrow. Yep. Uh, we'll move on to the other game seven, which is uh, at seven o'clock tomorrow. It's the hometown Philadelphia 76ers versus the Toronto Raptors in Toronto. Um, the first thing I have written down is I want to talk about this Embiid criticism. Uh, a lot of it has to do with his health, <coughs> but I don't know. I feel like a lot of the media in particular has been coming after him. So I don't know. What do you think about that? Coming after how he's played, you mean? Yeah, and a lot of people were just saying how uh, they did. They did. If you're, if it's not a season-ending injury, you got to play every game in the playoffs and play well. He has. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't. I mean, I'm not gonna. I know, but I think like they were saying how because he had like a what was it a upper respiratory infection or something like that. Yeah, last before last game. I think he said like his status was up in the air, and like some people didn't like that. They're like, if you're like, if your leg's not falling off, you got to be out there no matter what. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I kind of stink that he's so injury prone. Which I mean, I'm trying to look at it as a positive for the future. Like, is there, like, is is he ever not going to be injury prone? Like, could he ever be like less injury prone? Because uh, it's just like all like uh, such a variety of injuries he's had. I just can't envision him playing eighty-two games. Nah, there's, there's no, no way. way. There's no way. He at this point in his career, he's missed more games than he's played. I'm pretty sure. If he played, I mean, he sat the first two seasons. So I mean, he, that's if he somehow it. made it through a whole season, played every single game, eighty-two games. I feel like a major injury would be coming like. The next year, like he would get hurt major. Yeah, like I don't, I don't think his body could hold up that long. Yeah, no. So every I, se- every season's going to be like this. How he misses chunks right. of time. But I uh, I agree that I I don't think he sh- should be criticized too much. Like, and honestly, like it could serve the Sixers' benefit if his status is quote unquote up in the air leading up to the game. Like the I don't, I mean I guess the Raptors are or his op- the opponent whoever they're playing is going to prepare as if he's playing, but. Even if they prepare for as if he's playing, because obviously they want to prepare for the worst, meaning like they want to prepare if Joel means in the court. I'm talking yeah. from the Raptors, Raptors perspective. Like if he's not in the court, the, the Sixers offense is a whole different game plan. So like you could throw them off. I mean, it's it could be a blessing in disguise if Jess up in the air. And like I I, I haven't doubted he's not going to play. Like he it, he realizes the magnitude of this series, like how important this is, and the Sixers do too. Like they're going to do whatever he can to get him to play. Yeah, that's true. I I do think, to a certain extent, he was definitely criticized unfairly. Um, like you know, he was gonna play. So yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing I've written down: Do we think that Toronto will have enough, um, outside of Kawhi Leonard and Pascal Siakam? Because I feel like they're just doing all the scoring. Yeah. Uh, Kawhi has averaged twenty eight, twenty seven points, I think, in the playoffs. And Siakam's averaging twenty one point six, um, and so oh, I have different math. I figured I, I thought it was twenty point eight for Siakam. Really? Did you look that up or did you do it on your own? Did I do it on my own? No, I looked it up. Why would I calculate his average? And the averages are calculated for me. For the postseason? The playoffs, yeah. Oh, I oh I did it for this series. This series is average no. twenty point. I'm telling you, I said I the playoffs. It was twenty one. Um. But I feel like they just don't have enough. I did note that um, for the season, Siakam is averaging 16.9 on 54% shooting. The regular um, season. Right, yeah, yeah, regular season. And then uh, this series, he's averaged 20.8 and 45% from the field. Okay. So his usage rate, I don't know is, is what his usage rate actually is, but he's being used more. Less efficient. Just okay. Want to point that out. There's nothing really going there. <laughs> I guess, but like without him, they they would probably be done by now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just don't. Do you, have you ever seen that famous video of that one kid, yeah, with Kyle, Kyle Lowry, Lowry in the playoffs? <laughs> That's so funny. 
Um, I mean, so who do, who's out outside of those two? Now, I mean, if Kyle Lowry steps up, that'd be huge for them, clearly. But he we can't we cannot trust yeah, him. You can't, you can't trust him at <laughs> at this point in the season, I guess. Um, I could totally see him dropping a dud in Game Seven. I I mean, yeah, he really hasn't <laughs> produced much in the postseason, especially in Game Seven. I would not count on him. Um. Van Fleet's been playing well. I think I actually had to look at his stats, but I would say he is. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I. That is for someone who wants the Raptors to win. That does concern me. I don't think <coughs> right. there are other players. I don't know if they're just have enough, but they are favored. Okay. They're at home. They're six and a half point Isn't favorites. Gasol out. Yeah, that's why I was confused. I oh wait, no, 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 no! I wasn't sure if it was Pau Gasol or Marcus. No, no, it is Pau Gasol. It's Pau yeah, Gasol. That's what I was. That's what I thought too. Yeah, all right, yeah. Pa- Pau Gasol is he out for the 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 season? I think or is he just out for the rest of the series in the Celtics Bucks series. I think he's out for the year. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. It, it's not Marcus All. Yeah. Um, Raptors are six and a half point favorites. Uh, I would, the, the over under set at two oh nine. I thought it was pretty low. I mean, I guess it's game seven. Maybe they expect it to be more defensive and shots aren't falling. But the combining these teams' average points per game is twenty two hundred twenty nine point six. So the over under set at twenty points below the team's average, like what they'd average to be. To, to That's score a good it. point. I could definitely see it being a more defensive game. <laughs> it's game seven. Sure. Um, but who do you think is gonna win? Uh, I mean, I'm going to go with the Sixers, similarly to wh- why I picked the Nuggets, because as we said, outside of um, Leonard and Siakam, they, what the rest they have, like, that kind of scares you as a Raptors fan, in my opinion. The Sixers have other guys that can step up. I mean, it's been said the Sixers bench isn't that deep, isn't that great, but I, I don't know, I, I think they've... The, their bench players have been competent this series, and they're but I mean they're starting five. Like any of those five can go off on any 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 given night, which I trust. They're they're definitely they're overall definitely more, more talented than the yeah. Raptors. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna say the Raptors because that's wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as much as I don't like, I do not like Kawhi Leonard. If anyone doesn't know that, I do not like him. But he is good. And I still think people forgot about how good he was in the start of these playoffs. So I think he's going to shine in this game and have an absolute gem. I'm going to say 40 points. He could. Absolute. That's the average in the series. He was averaging like 36 or something, but I mean. I don't know. But he's going he's, he's going to put together an absolute gem, and I think he's just going to. Um, yeah, he's so good. Yeah. I mean, the reason I picked the Nuggets and the Sixers because they have, I feel like they have a more – more guys to rely on, but the guys that the Blazers and the Raptors have to rely on, like Lillard and Leonard, have both proven that they're not to not crack under pressure in Game Sevens throughout. And the they year. both have a really good right second best player too. Right, so I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So that's the Game Sevens. Uh, I just for the rest of the playoffs, I have written down. I don't know if you you can maybe just go off the top of your head here. I have the Warriors beating the Nuggets in five. I have <laughs> the Bucks beating the Raptors in six, and then the Warriors beating the Bucks in six in the finals. So, what do you think? I'm gonna say Kevin Durant back for Western Conference Finals. Maybe he'll miss the first couple games, uh, but who knows? It's kind of up in the air. They said he's going to be reevaluated. True. Uh, next week, so he may or may not be. Yeah, maybe in the game of the series, um, they rest him. It'll go like one one, and then I'll go Warriors and six over the Nuggets. What about the East? And then Bucks Sixers. Um, I'm gonna. I'm maybe like I have a feeling the Sixers will pull together a little bit, but I'll take the Bucks in seven because, yeah. I'll take Bucks in seven. After watching <coughs> the Celtics Bucks series very closely, I do not think that uh, I I'm just very confident. Like after they beat us, very confident that the Bucks will beat either of these two teams. There's a reason why they're the best team in the East this year. Yeah, I just chose not to see it. 
but they are. They're too big. They have too many guys that can shoot. Yeah, we we were talking about the other day, like pretty much anyone on that team can shoot besides <laughs> besides Giannis and Giannis. And he's still he not score. he's not a terrible shooter. Right, he's not a terrible shooter, and he can score almost like, any other way on the court. Chris Middleton can knock him down. Eric Bledsoe can knock him down. Pat Connaughton, Pat Connaughton can really knock him down, and that well, we're not just saying that because we like Notre Dame basketball, but he really can knock him down. Yeah, uh, even Brooke Lopez for a center, he's a great right. three point shooter, and Miritich too. So uh, they're big too. Middleton's huge. Giannis is huge. You they're a so big much. team. Yeah, him too. They're a big team, and they play. I think they're a top three defense. If I'm they not gotta mistaken. Be. They gotta be. Yeah, and they all can shoot, and they have. The MVP probably, yeah. so they're scary. I, I'm, I'm very confident they will beat either Toronto Malcolm or Brown Philly. Chris, oh, you mentioned Chris Middleton, yeah. Yeah, still, I don't. Yeah. I'm very confident they'll beat either Toronto or Philly. So yeah. And then what about the? I have. I said I had Warriors over Bucks in six because I think the Bucks can probably take them to six. I agree. So same in six. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll have many other updates because we still got a month and a half of the season left. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk about uh, the PGA Championship, which is coming up this week for a little bit here. Uh, it's Thursday to Sunday. First time they switched it around. It's in May this year. It's usually in August. But I like now, that. Yeah, now it's the second Not major. Not a big gap. Yeah, just one, one every month. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I know. I like the major, so I like how they're every month now. Yeah. Uh, it's being played at Beth Page Black in New York. Um, TJ's going, so yeah, it's, I thought Kevin's going too, probably. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Most recently, it held the Barclays in 2016. Uh, four players who are competing in the PGA Championship in the field have won at Beth Page, and Tiger is one of them. He won. Who, the, who are the other three? Do you know? Don't know. Oh, okay. I tried to find out, but I couldn't. Couldn't. Uh, find it and tiger won the 2002 us open there so quite a long time ago but he has experience there and he's won so that's definitely got to say something on your odds actually just read the odds sorry oh yeah no i just have one more fact about it okay uh tiger has never won the masters and the pj in the same year really yeah not this year not that you think he's gonna do it going grand slam <laughs> that'd be crazy <laughs> Um, the odd. Uh, you want me to read all the odds? <laughs> sure. Well, yeah. Whatever you. Uh... Yeah. So I wrote down the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. The top fifteen odds. Uh, for, you know, to win the tournament. Uh, at first was Dustin Johnson eight to one. I read these off of the Parks Casino app, by the way. So that's where I'm getting it from. Dustin Johnson won eight to one. Tiger Woods nine to one. Brooks Kepka ten to one. Uh, Rory twelve to one, Justin Rose twelve to one, John Rahm fourteen to one, Justin Thomas sixteen to one, uh, Molinari eighteen to one, Bryson DeChambeau twenty to one, Ricky twenty to one, Jason Day twenty two to one, uh, Xander Shoffley twenty two to one, Tony Fino twenty five to one, Spieth twenty eight, Fleetwood thirty, and Phil was forty to one. I don't think Phil was in there. I just included him because he's a big name. Yeah. Uh, kind of surprised, not surprised, just like it's crazy how speed. What did you say, speed was? I mean, he was the fourteenth, twenty eight. Yeah, that that's the first Pretty thing. Well. That's the first thing that jumps out to you. Yeah, I mean, he's he's never last won year it. And two years ago, I mean, he was the number like the best golfer, like the hot name, and I, he's still good. Just like he's never won the PGA Championship. He's won. He's won every other. Yeah. He's won all the other three. Yeah. So maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe his recent play. Maybe a combination of both. I want. Isn't I got an alert? I should have read into it. I thought Rory. Did he do something about like he's gonna play in the European tour? I is he? Are you sure he's playing in the? Uh, I mean, I guess he's on the odds. He's playing this, but. I didn't. I didn't, I, I didn't, didn't see what you were talking about. So. Oh, I, yeah. I, he's like. I think I think he's playing the European tour this year, which I don't know if that conflicts with the PGA tour. But yeah, I wasn't for sure. I wasn't sure if he was playing. That's why I, re- I wanted to read the odds. Yeah. Well, no, I hope he's playing. I want all the big names to be in. Definitely. Yeah. Um, one guy I like. I have no idea. For some reason, I'm just drawn to this name. I wrote down Xander Shoffley. Uh, he's very young. He's only 25, but he's very good. Yeah. He's only played in. 
he's played in all of the majors twice. So he's he only played in eight career majors, but he did well in all of them. He played in the Masters this past Masters. He came in second place. Yeah, like he kind of on Sunday he kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know Sunday score, but like he he really hung in there with the big names and like a lot of low scores on Sunday and just throughout the whole tournament this Masters with obviously Tiger and yeah. So he's never yeah, never won a major, yeah. obviously, but. At such a young age to do that, the Masters, I feel like he's definitely, he's a talented golfer, so I think he's definitely going to win one. He's, I mean, obviously, he's 25. He's got a very long yeah. golf career ahead of him, uh, but I liked him for some reason. Uh, and <clears throat> he hasn't played in a month, so he's well-rested. I feel like they kind of choose which tournaments they're going to play in strategically so they can line it up for the majors. And remember that uh, before the Masters, how we read that, like, predict that one weird predictor that like predicts the winner or whatnot and how they're like really successful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They I think they liked Shoffley for some reason. Okay. So and like I I kinda had my doubts about that predictor thing. Yeah, because who who do we who do we say? Uh, they're big on one name and we're like, oh this guy's gonna win. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to look back at yeah. that and see how well they actually did. But I I mean I was skeptical of it, but then I read through who they predicted right and it was some pretty big ones so i kind of trust i mean you can't trust anyone because it's no one can see into the future but i don't know they like shawfully and i kind of looked into him a little bit and i i think he could probably make some noise beth page is a really it's kind of a hard course i feel like from reading up on it yeah so, it is. yeah mm-hmm. so we'll see uh, i think golf digest had a, <laughs> like the sixth the most difficult in america well, if I, if I read that correctly, but it could be a difficult course. We'll see. I always like when majors are like, I don't know, like two under wins it. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I like it. I think it's cool. I Webb Simpson a lot of defensive Webb, play. Webb Simpson won it at won the U.S. Open when he won. I think he was like even or like yeah, one over. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was the U.S. Oh, you said that. US you know Open, the yeah. most like nerd thing I ever did. <laughs> so in calc. Uh, there's like different techniques of integration. Okay. And like the Simpsons rule is one of them. I don't know what that is, but okay. And in order for, in order to use the Simpsons rule, uh, you have to choose like the integration techniques. Like you have to estimate. This is no one wants to hear about this, but <laughs> uh, you have to estimate the area under a curve. And yeah. like, there's different. There's like the trapezoid method. There's like the midpoint method. There's Simpsons rule. Okay. Like, stuff like that. Uh, and then in order to do Simpsons rule, N had to be an even number. And I remember that because Webb Simpson won the U.S. Open close to even. <laughs> That's how I remembered it. That's the most stupid thing I've ever said on this podcast. But That's good. Yeah. Shout out Webb Simpson. Yeah. Helping us pass. I mean, calc. I failed calc once, so that, this is, but I got <laughs> it the second Webb time. Simpson. Uh, no, but no, I, if I wasn't for him, I wouldn't even remember that. So there thanks, Webb. Uh, for helping Mitchell fail Calc 1. But then, pa- no, this is Calc 2, and then passing it again. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he helped you pass Calc 2. Well, I failed, then I passed. Calc 1 or 2? Both. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just move on. Yeah. Um, that was the Calculus Minute <laughs> on the Highline Podcast. Never again. Yeah. All right, so that's pretty much it for the PGA Championship. I just wanted to talk about it briefly. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it uh, when it's concluded, and we'll... Uh, See who won. I will, probably won't get to watch much of it. We have our Dynasty Rookie Draft that day. Oh, yeah. So probably won't see mo- uh, much of that. But, yeah, I'll, we'll definitely look into it. And we'll probably talk about it for a little bit and whatnot. All right. The last thing we're going to do, uh, kind of a little same thing I came up with. We always like to talk about the NFL for a little bit on the show. So uh, even when it's the off season in the middle of, you know, the season's still four months away. Still like to talk about it. Uh, I'm going to ask Jack. The the question here is: Should this player make the Hall of Fame? And I'm going to give him seven current players who are kind of borderline ish to the Hall of Fame. Maybe not. Maybe he'll think all of them should be in the Hall of Fame. But yep. I'm going to read seven names who are in the NFL or just recently retired from the <coughs> NFL, and he's going to say if they should or should not be in the Hall of Fame. I'm, I've got my Google search ready in case I want to look up stats real quick, but. Just right. go give me the first name. First name. Should AJ Green be in the Hall of Fame? 
Stop doing that with the pen. Um. I got my answer. You give your answer because I'm gonna look something up real quick. Well, since uh, since a lot of these players are currently playing, like if this player just like had a season, a career-ending injury tomorrow, a lot of these players like won't have a good enough resume to make the Hall of Fame. Yeah. But I'm gonna say AJ Green if he just puts together like two more seasons of where he's at, and then like two more seasons that are like okay after that, I think he could make it. He had. I, mean, I think he's had yeah. a thou- he started off his career with like six straight seasons of a thousand yards, I think. Something You're like correct. That. So he came off the league's hot and then he's um so with the pace he's on, if he doesn't just fall off a cliff tomorrow, I think he could be in. His numbers are comparable to Julio and they came out the same year. So if you think Nah, that- Julio has more yards. Yeah. For sure. But like they're up there with him and like he's not too far off from him. So I'm going to say yes. Um, but he's at, it's going to take him some time. Yeah. He's not going to get in right away. Well, I, what you said, how he he's going to need like a year or two at what he's at. And then like, what would you say? I Like you need. He's definitely not going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He will definitely <clears throat> no, yeah. take years. But like, I don't trust his longevity that much. I don't know how much I don't I don't yeah, it's true. have much faith in how long he's gonna go. Like he, he's been pretty injury prone. Um, so give an I answer, yes or no. Uh, I'll say yeah eventually, mm, barely. But I I think it does depend on what he does for the rest of his career, which is kind of a cop out answer. But I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say no. All right, because I don't I don't I I don't trust that he's gonna last for that much longer. I really don't think I honestly don't think he's gonna last much longer. That's why I like Tyler Boyd in my dynasty team. Okay. Next player, will Marshawn Lynch make the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, uh, this one was harder for me. It seems like he's a player that should make the Hall of Fame, but I don't know. We're looking. We're looking at some stats right now. Um, he's got. Like ten ten thousand something yards. Yeah, ten thousand three hundred. Seventy nine touchdowns. Right. Yeah. Nine receiving. No, touchdowns. no, eighty four. Eighty four rushing. Nine receiving. Nine receiving. That's almost a hundred total touchdowns. Yeah. And then receiving yards. What's he got? Twenty two. So he's got like twelve thousand five hundred all purpose yards. So Ninety four touchdowns. These players obviously have really good stats and. You have to say, like, oh, there's, like, an old guy who has, like, 5,000 yards, and he's in the Hall of Fame. But, like, you got to just – It's so much different. It's just a different game. So you can't really go off of that. But I don't know. I just think he's – I don't think – I think he's going to fall just short. Maybe he'll get in, like, a long time, but I'm going to say no. No, I'll say yeah because if he's – assuming he's done for his career, it's kind of – then he mentioned he might come back now. I don't know, but – um. That's over his 11-year career. He's averaging like 1,100 yards, all-purpose yards, on eight and a half touchdowns each season for a whole career. Like if you have that in one season, it's a good season. It is just his average. Like when he tell so. I'm gonna say yeah. Only reason maybe not, maybe because the NFL might not like him because of how he's, just because of who he is. I don't know. I yeah. Look how long they kept T.O. out. Yeah, so like, which is ridiculous because Tio should have easily first. I'm, it, that that's just so annoying. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, that was bad. Easily second all time in yards and uh, great receivers was whatever. But so the only reason, no, he he will be in eventually. But the only reason he may not be in so quickly is because of who he is. I mean, obviously how he's treated the media and everything. Yeah, I don't know how well liked he is around. Uh, NFL higher ups, so yeah, but I still say yes. <clears throat> All right, the third guy will Matt Ryan be in the Hall of Fame? Ooh. Initially, I was like, he will definitely be in the Hall of Fame. As but... weird as that sound, because if you look at his stats, he's got I think, if not mistaken, forty six thousand yards, right? 
what do you oh total yeah the first you're right you're right yeah, yeah yeah and he's only how old he's only 33 33 oh look he's 33 yes oh he's gonna be 34 next week so you know what i i initially said yes because i just thought like his stats jumped out to me but i'm gonna retract that i'm gonna say he is not gonna make it he puts up great numbers, but a lot of quarterbacks put up great numbers now. So there's only like, I don't know. I, I'm going to say no, because I feel like Bold. a lot of quarterbacks are, I mean, he does have an MVP to his name though. Right, exactly. So I, I've never been the biggest Matt Ryan fan, but he puts up competent stats as what we just said. He averages 4,200 yards a season. That's and, great. That's so good. Right. And then touchdowns. He's averaging, oh, how many seasons he played? Uh, 11, 4,200 yards and 27 touchdowns a year for his whole career. And, like, I feel like he's not going to slow down for another, like, at right. least three or four more years. And the fact that he has an MVP, I That's think big, that kind of put, yeah, like, how many guys have an MVP? Yeah, I don't, I, okay, I this like, is. I think even MVP, you're, that that bodes well. To this me. is kind of going off because this is not a guy who I've written down. But do you put Cam Newton in the Hall of Fame? Uh, I love Cam, but I mean, he has a he, he is an MVP. Gotta, I know he's got to do he's got to do more. Yeah, but you think Matt Ryan like like Cam Newton's younger? He's got more time. He he has more years. He's got to prove himself more. Yeah, so you just think if Matt Ryan stays in this pace that he's at, he will probably be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I'm, like, uh, would you put Philip Rivers in? I feel like you would. I think Philip Rivers is no doubt in the Hall of Fame. Then I, I feel like Matt Ryan's stats aren't that much behind them. Yeah. Plus he's an MVP. That's true. I This is this was one of the hardest ones for me. I was, like, I'm I, never going to argue for Matt Ryan. I don't, I'm, I, I've gone on record saying I'm not the biggest Matt Ryan fan, but I... I you think just said it five minutes ago. Yeah, like I, I think he, he deserves it. Yeah. It, that's, this one, that one was probably the hardest for me. I was really going back and forth with him. So I really don't know, but I think you kind of swayed me. So I'm going to say yes now, because especially like if Philip Rivers is in, <laughs> I feel like Matt Ryan's got to be in. Yeah. All right. Next guy I have is Nadamikin Sue, a Hall of Famer. No. Oh. <laughs> he made a lot of All Pro teams early on in his career, and his his stats. Mm. No, you can't. I don't know. You can't really look at his stats. I feel like they're not really there. But he, he made a lot of All Pro teams. Like, look at that. Well, stats, what are we looking at? But what stat? He's a defensive tackle. Correct? Right, so I'm saying, yeah, so defen- really... defensive tackles, they're not, outside of Aaron Donald, who's the outlier for defensive tackles, they're not, they're run stoppers. They're not getting, they're not necessarily going out to the quarterback. He averages like seven sacks a season, which that's fine. That's good for him. Like, yeah, that's good that's for him. great a, for a D tackle. An yeah. interior lineman, yeah. And I'm going to say, yeah, because. We'll see. The thing is, well, it's kind of a common thread. Not common thread, but similar to Marshawn Lynch. I think Sue deserves it, but how well liked he is, is he by NFLs? Probably a lot worse than Marshawn Lynch. Right. Like, uh, he's, he's a nasty. He's, I mean, I, I don't know. He hasn't done much recently, but like, but like he he was obviously the face stub, and he's not very well liked around the league. But I think, well, going on what you said, three all pro, first team all pros, six Super Bowl. <laughs> six Pro Bowls or, or five Pro Bowls, whatever. Like he he deserves it, which we ha- alright. But hold on, I feel like we have to like. There's a difference between like really really good players and dominant players at the time, but then like it's the Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? Like, this is supposed to be a select group of guys. Like I think I feel like we're underestimating like how like prestigious the Hall of Fame really is. Have we said yes to everyone? No, I said no to Green. I said yes to Lynch. Yes, I said yes, yes to, to Matt Ryan, Ryan and you and said yes to Sue. Yeah. So we just have to keep that in mind. We have three names left, but I don't know. It's so hard. This is a very hard thing to, I, I think, um, analyze in a way and give like a solid like case and prediction because it's really your opinion. But I say yes to Sue. Okay. You say no to Sue? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say no. This next guy, I'm probably going to say no as well. Is Earl Thomas a Hall of Famer? 
He's not done. A lot of these guys aren't done, obviously. They're all current players besides Marshawn Lynch. But... <coughs> I don't mm. know. I'm going to say no. Guys, again, another thing you have could say against him, he was playing with like a really good secondary. So how much was it really on him? Richard Sherman and same Cam a- Chancellor. Yeah, but same accolades as Sue. Three first team all pros, five Pro Bowls. Yeah. And like he a Super Bowl. He was always a top three safety. Like while he's like in his dominant I don't years. Say yes. I'm gonna say no. Because I don't think he's gonna be that great. I said no with Sue, I'm gonna say no with the Earl Ravens Thomas. this year. He is thirty. Yeah, like I'm gonna say no. Hmm. But then I feel bad because you said yes with Sue, and they're kind of like yeah. Because for Su- similar to what I said about AJ Green, Earl Thomas is pretty injury prone. I don't see him producing that much. I mean, he hasn't made a he, last Pro Bowl was 2017. He missed the Pro Bowl in 2016 and 18. I don't see him like returning to what he was because he's injury prone. I don't think he's gonna be that great in the Ravens. So I don't similar to what I said about AJ Green. I don't think he's gonna do he's, his longevity is not gonna be there. It's not gonna. He's, I don't think he's gonna last much longer. But what I said about Sue, I think he's already proven himself. They have the same accolades with three All-Pros, five Pro Bowls. But I'm going to say no. Okay. Next guy, second to last guy here, uh, is Terrell Suggs a Hall of Famer? I hate Terrell Suggs. I think I'm going to say yes, he is. Um, he has 132-ish career <laughs> sacks. Which is, I think I looked up, 12th or 13th all time. So he's definitely in the top 15 all sacks. Uh, he is a defensive player of the year. He has won a Super Bowl. And he's been to a lot of Pro Bowls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Pro Bowls. Yeah, seven Pro Bowls, a defensive player of the year, a Super Bowl champion, and he's 12th all time in sacks. I think that's good enough to be the Hall of Fame. One first team all pro. Um, but... I'm going to say yeah, because um, I feel like the NFL, they like longevity. Yeah. He's done it since and 2003. He's, and he's 30, yeah, he's like 36, right? Yeah, 2000, he's, at, he's going in year 17, I think. 16? Year 16 for Terrell Suggs. And, I mean, he's still producing, so I'm going to say yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. That's how you know we're not biased, because we don't like Terrell Suggs. I hate Terrell so. Suggs. He's in. All right, last guy is LaShawn McCoy, Hall of Famer. Interesting. I am just going to answer that. I'm going to say yes, he is. I think he, right now, he has slightly better career stats than Marshawn Lynch, and he's still not done yet. Um, but again, it's another thing. Like better. He, he oh, had, he's got a lot of, I oh, know, that's about he um he's got eighty one total touchdowns, all purpose yards, little more. He's at like fourteen hundred, fourteen thousand two hundred. Could play like two more years too. Then I'll say yeah. I mean yeah, he's made was is like seven six Pro Bowls, one two three six Pro Bowls, two first team All Pros. I'll say yeah. Definitely, I think he led the league in rushing one year and definitely touchdowns. That one yeah, year with the six, Eagles. Yeah, yeah. In twenty thirteen he led the league in rushing at sixteen hundred seven. Led league in touchdowns in twenty eleven at seventeen touchdowns. Sure. Didn't no, didn't he? No. Yeah, you're not right. the same year, yeah. Yeah. But he made first team on pro both years of those. Yeah. Alright, that's all I got. Um So it was we read the list again, I just want to say AJ Green. No. Marshawn Lynch. Yes. Matt Ryan. <clears throat> yes. Sue. Yes. Thomas. No. Suggs? Yes. McCoy? Yes. So I think you said yes to everyone but Thomas and Green. Yeah. I said no to Lynch, Sue, and Thomas. Okay. I I think that it's a very interesting thing to bring up, but it's also very hard. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm not really going to fault you for any of the answers you had there. All right. So that's today's episode. Uh, it's a good one. And thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah. 
Uh, be sure to subscribe to the Hogline Podcast on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. Follow the show for all the updates on Instagram at Hogline Podcast. Follow me at Mitchell Manis. Follow Jack at underscore Jack dot Manis underscore. I finally got that down after all these episodes. <laughs> yeah, it's a good enough. Yeah. Go Raptors. <laughs>